So hi everyone, this is Jasky from the Achievement Squad, coming at you with a 100% walkthrough for the indie title Horror of the Deep. As part of this video, I am going to show you how to get all of the achievements. So there are 10 achievements in total, 9 of which for completing each chapter and 1 for beating the game itself. So from this point onwards, there is a full spoiler warning in effect because I will show you the game from start to finish. So the game itself is kind of reminding me of games like Amnesia The Dark Descent and Outlast. It's set in a kind of dark, spooky world where it's haunted by monsters that are going to come after you at every, every possible opportunity. Um, game's not too tricky itself. It's going to take about 30 to 40 minutes to beat. Uh, there are a couple of um, areas like level 9 towards the end where keys and stuff spawn in random locations, but I'll help you out with showing you those locations. Um, so yeah, overall it was a very enjoyable uh, experience. This game, so I give it a bit of a 7 out of 10. Anyway, so let's get this show on the road. Okay, so we're going to jump straight into the first chapter, which is called The Beginning. Uh, you're going to start off in this kind of like well area. You want to look down and you want to drop down the levels until you eventually reach the floor at the bottom. Straight ahead of you, you are going to see a corridor and we want to make our way into the corridor. Walk straight forward and you want to push uh, A on this door in front of you and that's going to open that one up. Uh, and you want to head straight down the staircase in front of you. Make your way all the way down to the bottom and at the bottom there is a door. You want to go through this one and then you want to continue forward and you're going to hit a bridge and you're going to get a bit of a jump scare along the way. Now it's worth noting the, sh the marker around the screen that you saw when the jump scare went off. is This is what's going to kind of happen when you're going to get chased by a monster. But for this bit you just pretty much walk straight forward until you hit the end of the level and you'll go into the atrium of uh, Renunciation. You'll bag yourself the first achievement uh, for descending into the deep. So the first level is a nice easy one to kick you off. We're now in level two. So pretty much straight off the bat, the first thing we're gonna do is we wanna walk down the stairs. Now, if you hold down the left bumper, it's gonna enable you to sprint and go a little bit faster. Uh, and we wanna keep making our way down here. Now, I'm just gonna introduce you to one of the enemies where you see the blood stain on the floor, this guy here. Uh, I would eventually come looking for you after a certain period of time. So keep making your way down the end of that corridor. You'll hit the top of these stairs here. You want to take a left and you're going to walk into the darkness here and you can't see it, but it's a very well hidden corridor. Keep walking all the way through and you want to make your way up to the top of the stairs and at the top of the stairs, you're going to find your first key. Pick this one up. We are looking for three in total. Turn around, head back down the stairs and you want to continue back through the incredibly dark corridor that was borderline invisible. Once you're back at the top of the stairs, you want to take a left and you want to head down these stairs. And when you're at the bottom, you want to head left and then you want to go into the corridor just here, into the room full of uh, lights. Now on the floor, be careful, there is a trap switch. You want to walk around that and not on it and grab the key from the other side. Walk past the trap switch and make your way back into the room with the stairs. Make your way past the stairs and then take a right and go underneath the stairs and you're going to find key number three. Once you've picked that one up, you want to turn around and you want to make your way to the bottom of the stairs and straight in front of you is a locked door with three padlocks on it. Push A on it, it's going to open up and you want to walk through into the next level and you're going to bag yourself the next achievement. So we are now in the third level, which is Auditorium of the Crypt. Uh, and the first thing we need to do is pretty much walk straight past here. You can go in the cage and you get like a weird little flashy animation. I don't think it does much. Uh, however, continue straight forward across the bridge and go through the next door that is ahead of you and straight through into the next level. And then you're going to bag yourself the next achievement for clearing the auditorium of the crypt and go into the forbidden crypt. Okay, so now we're in level number four, the forbidden crypt. Now, what it's worth noting in this level, there is a uh, set of keys that we need to collect uh, and I'll explain a little bit more about them. Head forward and you want to take a right uh, in front of this page and you want to go through the door just here. You're going to enter a room with a person rolling around on the floor. You need to stay clear of that person because they will grab you and kill you. Exit this room to the left and you want to follow this corridor all the way to the end. And as you enter this room, you want to go over to the chair that's facing the flame on the wall and you want to pick up the key that is on that chair. Turn around and you want to make your way back into the room with the lady rolling around on the floor. Uh, and then you want to take a left of this room and exit out. 
and we're going to go through the door that is at the top of the stairs. Now, as you come into this room, you're going to see a guy crawling around on the floor. You need to stay clear of him. He's a little bit more mobile than the other person you've just seen rolling around on the floor in the next area. Um, if they get you, they will kill you. Um, you can see him just here, and there's a couple of these guys in this area. Exit this room to the left, and you want to make your way all the way down to this corridor to the end, and there's a door that is hidden in the dark. Now, what I will worth, what is worth saying is that in this case, the key is here for me, but it may not be here for you. If you find that is the case, if you quit out and come back into the game, the key will respawn. I'm not sure if it appears in a different area. I could not find it in any other location. So I don't know if it's a bug or not. Now, turn around and we want to exit out of this corridor and we want to make our way down to the end, watching out for people crawling around on the floor. Once you're out of that corridor, you want to make your way across the other side of the room and there's another corridor just here. We want to head in and then you want to take a left when you can and then you want to take a right at the first opportunity and there is just a door here that you need to go through. I apologize for the funny cut here, my game had a bit of a funny few minutes. When you're in that room you want to turn to the right, take a left, follow it to the end and in the corner you're going to find your next key next to a candle. Once you have that key, exit out of the room, you will take a right, followed by a left pretty much straight away. Uh, and you want to go back through the door you just opened. You want to take a left again, and then you want to take a right, and this is going to take you back into the main room with the guy crawling around on the floor. Keep an eye out for him, just to make sure you don't stand on him. Head to the right, and you want to make your way over to the triple locked door, and you want to exit this level for your next achievement. Okay, so we are now in the Passage of Severance. This is a nice and kind of quick and easy-ish level. Uh, you're going to get introduced to the lantern here, so head straight forward and you want to pick this one up. It's on the uh, shelf straight in front of you. By pushing X, you'll actually take out your lantern and you will light up the room. It's quite handy. Um, from that lantern, turn around and hit the switch on the wall behind you. Turn back towards the lantern and make your way across the other side of the room and the gate has opened up in front of you. And you want to make your way down to where the bridge is broken. Now, you can't cross here, but look to the left where the uh, the broken balcony is, and you want to push Y to jump, and you'll drop down to the ledge below. You should probably break your ankle from falling from that height too. Enter the corridor, take a right, push X to pull out your lantern so you can see your next door. Open up the door, and you want to conserve your lantern because it will run out. Take a right at the end of this corridor, and you want to pull your lantern out at this point because there are some booby traps that you need to look out for. So as you're coming down here, you're going to get a bit of a jump scare. Uh, but on the floor here, you will see a switch. Do not stand on that because this will open up the floor in front of you, causing you to fall down. Once you're around this one, keep making your way straight forward to the end of the walkway. Take a left just here and then a quick right and then a sharp right and head up some stairs. And as you come up the stairs, you want to take another right, and you're going to be on the other side now. So take a left, continue straight down to the other end of the walkway, uh, conserving your lantern if you're not using it. Take a left and go into the room just here, and then take a second left, and you're going to find your next switch on the wall. Hit the switch, and this is going to open up the gate to exit the level. Turn around, take a right, take a second right. Uh, and then when you can turn right again where the gate was, you can exit out and go into level number five. Okay, so we're now coming into the next level called Basin of Tears. You're going to be greeted by a guy who looks like the lead singer of Ghost, Tobias Forge, I think it is. Um, now, I think I cut corners on this level and I do it very quickly. Um, and it's quite straightforward, uh, but there's probably a better way of doing this. Um, so head down past the statue. Normally you would go to the right, but I go to the left. And when you walk into this area, you're going to see a uh, doorway across on the far side. Hold down the left bumper and push Y to jump to the very other side next to this grate. And you want to walk across the platforms just in front of you. And then you want to take a right just here. Uh, and then you want to take a immediate left to find the level exit. Now, for some reason, I, I th there's more to that level. There is like an area where you can go into and there's tons of enemies, but that seems to be the quickest route. I don't know if it's the right or the wrong route, but it certainly works. If you find a different way through the level, drop it in the comment sections below. I'll be interested to hear, but you can get that level done in pretty much a few seconds flat. 
So we're now in the uh, the arcane library. Okay, so this level's a little bit longer than the last anyway, but it's still pretty straightforward. There's no monsters in this area. So you want to continue straight forward and you're actually going to come into the library. Uh, and as you come into this area, you want to take a, a right and there's a stairwell kind of going down. So head down the stairs uh, and then you want to take a, another quick right and you want to walk forward. Uh, and you're going to come into kind of a major library, library area covered in blood. You want to keep walking past this and you'll go past a very large chain with a kind of hole. Um, and then you want to head up the stairs at the end and at the point here before the other stairs take a right and you're going to see a hole in the wall. Head down the stairs that are in this section to all the way down to the bottom. Uh, and you're going to make your way to the other side of this room after this jump scare. So take a right and go past all of the different uh, bookshelves. And then you want to go through the door on the other side. You're going to go up a set of stairs again. And as you reach the top, uh, to your left you're going to see a statue and you want to stand on the panel in front of that statue. And just to your left it's going to open up the wall. And then you want to go through this wall and you want to take a left. And you want to take another left. There's no only other way you can go anyway. And you're going to want to follow the uh, planks that are above the library across the other side. And you're going to come across another stairwell that you're going to need to go up. Once you're at the top, you want to make your way straight across to the other side and you want to fall down a hole at the end of this walkway. Once you're at the bottom, you want to turn around and kind of find this area where you can see kind of the archways. Come into this room and you want to head up into the lit corridor to finish the arcane library. This now will take you through into the next level, Gorge of the Swarm. And this level itself is also pretty quick, um, there's nothing too complicated about it. Start off by making your way straight forward and then kind of head to the right a little bit. You'll need to pull out your lantern to see it, but there is a switch on the wall in the right hand corner. Backtrack a little bit and then turn into the right and the gate uh, will have opened up on the end. Head down to the end here and you can just kind of drop off and you want to land on the stairs below. And you want to follow these stairs all the way down to the bottom. Now that you've made it all the way down, take a left and then you want to take a quick right and as you come into here, you want to take another short left followed by another quick right and then on your right hand side you're going to see a wooden bridge which you want to cross over. So make your way over to the other side, take a look to the right and then take a look to the left and you're going to see two doorways in front of you. Make your way through both of them uh, and then to your left you're going to spot another switch on the wall. You want to hit this one and this is going to open up the exit of the level. Turn around, go past the rubble, take a right, do not go through the second door, just turn right and you will find a opening to the end of the level, bagging you your next achievement. Now this is the most tricky level, uh, and that is because the keys seem to spawn in random locations every single time, so during my practice playthroughs I had to do what I can to identify where I think they will spawn and I will show those to you. Uh, there are three keys, but there are four locations that I identified. Uh, and now to start this level off, what we're going to do is we're going to refill the torch just in case um, because this area is quite dark. So head out and take a left and you've got a statue in front of you. Just behind that statue is a brand new torch. Pick it up, turn to the right and you want to make your way across to the other side. Go past the stairs here and you want to make your way into the next corridor. And you're going to see this big guy walking around. Uh, you want to stay away from him. If you get too close, he will kill you. He doesn't need to see you. He will just kill you if you're too close. Take a left whilst keeping your distance and then you want to make your way forward. Uh, now these guys kind of like a Metal Gear Solid game, they follow a specific pattern. Uh, keep making your way forward so you reach the very end. You do want to turn right here but I've got one of those guys. So as I turn right what you'll see is I'll back up. The field of vision or the, the area of effect where they come in and grab you is not very big. So if you back up to the kind of uh, just a few spaces he won't see you. Just give it a few seconds just to make sure he's moved along first of all. Head forward, take a right, 
and you want to enter this room here. Now, I don't have a key in here, but you might. So on this plinth just in front of you will be a key in some cases. Cannot guarantee that that will be the case for you. So yet these keys seem to randomly flicker between different locations, but I think I should have you covered. Um, from here, you want to exit out of the room. And this area is very much like a maze. Take a left, take a second left, and you want to start making your way down this corridor. Now, I do bump into a guy here, so I just need to kind of stay out of sight. Uh, I just kind of wait for him to move out of the way. He goes to the right, and he seems to be walking around in the square, this guy, every time. Now that he's gone, you want to make your way down to the end of the corridor, and then you want to take a right, and you want to keep going forward to your back into the room that you spawned in. We're back by these two statues with some stairs. We want to head up these stairs to the top. Now it's worth noting if the keys uh, aren't spawning in certain areas, you can quit out and it does rearrange the keys. At the top of the stairs, take a left and you want to keep going straight forward uh, and you eventually come across a bridge. It's not very clear to see, so I just kind of slow down so you can see it here. Take a left at the end of the bridge, take it a right. Then you want to take another left and then you want to take a right and you want to make your way up the stairs. On the other side, you want to go down the stairs. As you come through this corridor, take a next left, and then you want to head down the stairs again. Don't go up the other side, take a left and go down one more time. And now here is another possible key spawn location. Take a right, head down, and then in the right-hand side of this area, there will be a key, potentially, for you. It really depends. Like I said, if you struggle to find them, quit out and they will rearrange themselves. Turn around. And you want to keep making your way down the very big long corridor until you eventually walk into a big room full of pillars. So on the left hand side of this room opposite the light, make your way up the stairs, go through the door and you're going to walk into a room with one of those statues. He does not come after you, you're absolutely fine. And then here is another potential key spawn location. You want to pick that one up. Uh, and that is key number two for me. It could be key number three for you, or it could be key number one for you, I don't know. Um, turn around, exit that room, and you want to take a right, and you want to start making your way back uh, to the set of stairs that we were climbing up. So as you get closer to this area at the light, turn right. This area is such a maze, it's a pain to navigate. Head up the stairs, take another right, go up the stairs again. Walk forward, take a right, Go up even more stairs. And then you want to go down some stairs. Mixing it up a little bit here. Take a left. Do a little bit of a quick left and then a left again and you're back at the bridge. Cross over to the bridge on the other side. And then we want to head into the corridor and we want to take our first left. And as you come into this corridor, you're going to see one of those crocodile fellas walking around. Just be careful, take your time so he doesn't catch you, because otherwise you start the level over again. Uh, keep walking forward, make sure he's not around, and you're going to eventually kind of bump into this kind of zombie-like lady. Um, you need to keep your distance. Let her go to the right of the room, just to give yourself a bit of breathing space. Um, she walks slowly here, but the moment she spots you, she'll come at you. Uh, it's kind of like, it kind of reminds me of the witches from Left of Dead. She will literally just pounce on you. So once she's on the right hand side of the room, you want to make your way to the left, kind of edge through slowly, just to make sure you keep your distance. Uh, and as you're coming into this corridor, it's worth popping out the light just to see it a little bit better because it's quite dark here. You want to take the first right, make your way down to the end of this corridor, and then you want to take another right, and then you'll walk forward and you want to take the first right, and this is the key spawn location uh, number four. I actually get a key here. You may not have a key here. I apologize in advance if it's not there for you. From this uh, room, we want to exit out. So head down the stairs. You want to take a left and we're now going to progress to the end of the level. Take a, another left just here and then you want to take a right. And as you're coming down this corridor, pull out your lantern just to get a little bit more light. As you're coming down the first right, you want to take that down and you're going to walk into a very large room with lots of people screaming. Now in this area we're going to need to move with speed. Make your way to the staircase but don't go up it, go down to the right and you want to run down to the end of the uh, hallway just here. Sometimes the croc from upstairs will come down, sometimes he won't. 
Uh, but run down to the end and he should leave you alone eventually. There's also a lantern on the end as well to keep yourself stocked up. And just by there, there's a set of stairs. Now edge your way up slowly, just so you can see the crocodile guy and any of the zombie people. Immediately take a right and go up the next set of stairs and walk all the way down to the very end. Uh, and you're going to come to the final exit door of the game. The padlocks, for some reason for me, still float in the air. Um, you want to walk forward and you're going to fall down a hole. Now this is going to bag you the final two achievements for the game. So one for beating chapter number nine uh, and then also one for beating the game. At the same time, this area, I don't know if it counts as a level, but just wander around the room and eventually the monster will grab you and it will finish the game. I have been Jessica from the Achievement Squad. If you find this guide useful, drop us a like, comment and subscribe and happy hunting.